Hi, good evening. I'm Allison Taylor, and I was invited to share with you a little bit about my experience in, at CMC and in Valor uh, this past January. Um, I'm really sorry I can't be there with you. Um, I'm a new resident physician, and I'm on my eighth night and final night of night shift at the VA hospital admitting patients. Um, and in spite of my um, love of a good night's sleep, I'm actually having a good time and learning a lot and really enjoy uh, veterans who are some of the most gracious patients I've seen. Um, so um, I'm a Scudder descendant. Um, Silas Scudder is my great, great, great grandfather. Um, and I came to know about the Scudder family and about Dr. Ida um, by way of a tattered um, book that sat on our bookshelf in our family living room as far back as I can remember. And it was during school holidays when I was looking for a book to read um, that I would, my eyes would inevitably fall on this, um, hardback and I would take it down and look at the cover and wonder who is this woman, uh, Dr. Ida, and I would open up the front cover and I would see an inscription to my grandmother Claire and a type of handwriting I had never seen before and couldn't read that was very mysterious and wondered also why my father kept this book for so long and would put it back and move on to the, the novels, um, hoping to see a new one that I hadn't seen the year before. Um, so fast, fast forward to 2017, um, my father has been to India a number of times at this point and is part of the Scudder Association and has shared with me a little bit about um, Dr. Ida and about the Scudder family and about South India and CMC as an institution. And I'm also a fourth year medical student in my final year of medical school, which is an amazing feeling, the sense of accomplishment is imminent and you finally have a little bit of free time to read books and do whatever you want and also the opportunity to go on a global health elective. So for me it was pretty obvious I was going to go to India. I had never been there before and I was learning you know, more and more about uh, CMC that it felt like a perfect time and a great opportunity. So it was in the lead up to, um, to my trip when I finally got my hands on a Lonely Planet guide to South India and figured out how I would get to Valor and uh, what I would do once I was there. And I cracked open uh, a copy of Dorothy Clark Wilson's book, Dr. Ida, and really um, my journey to India began. Um, I arrived um, in Valor on um, New Year's Day, which is a lonely time to arrive in a new place because people are on holiday and things are closed. But um, I was staying on the Bagayam campus and it's just a stunning, amazingly beautiful place with tropical plants and huge ficus trees with puzzling gnarly root systems and beautiful flowers, there's Bougainvillea, um, the birds are make new and different sounds and so I in my jet lag days slowly walked around the campus um, and I was staying in a international hostel and there were people from Germany, Malaysia, Austria, there was a guy from Australia who was also from originally from um, Sri Lanka, um, which meant that he spoke Tamil, which is the language that they speak in Valur as well. But it turned out his Tamil was a, 
akin to Shakespearean English. So it was quite a spectacle. And strangers loved talking to him because of how strange he sounded to them. But it, he was really awesome to have around because he helped us do things I don't think we otherwise would have been able to. Like, we found an unmarked path um, that led to a hike up the tallest hill um, in Volur called Hospital Hill. And at the top of the the hill we found an uh, overgrown, crumbling fort. And I don't know the history of the fort. I wish I knew who built it and why. Um, there were porticos and crumbling staircases and just really an evocative, beautiful place that was surprisingly silent because we were so high up we could no longer hear the uh, din of the street. Um, but had a beautiful view of, of the surrounding city. And we were taking plenty of photos and enjoying ourselves and eating our snacks. And it was in the background of a photo, someone noticed a fat monkey um, making his way towards us. And we had been warned that the monkeys were hungry and we shrieked and secured our snacks and made a, started making our way quickly back down the hill. And uh, and enjoyed the continued to enjoy the the view and we could hear before we could hear the sounds of the city we could hear the um, evening call to prayer and eventually made it back down and back to campus inevitably we went to the canteen and the canteen turned out to be sort of the center of my existence while I was uh, in Volur and spending time at CMC I ate the vast majority of my meals there. I worked my way through the menu. I learned all about the Indian dishes. I learned to count my money and count my rupees there. I met my limit for spiciness. Um, I came to really love a mango ice cream that was served with chocolate chips. But more importantly, I really made some friends there. Um, the, I met a group of German girls who knew about a rooftop yoga class and they invited me. Um, I met a resident from South Africa who um, told me about the water shortage in Cape Town and about how he was attacked by a shark while he was surfing and that the main reason he was at CMC was to learn about um, how to effectively um, provide healthcare services to the rural poor because that's what he wants to do back in South Africa. I met two GI fellows from Ethiopia and um, they were at CMC for a two month long training uh, learning uh, advanced GI procedures. Uh, procedures that are not very available in Ethiopia yet. And they told me that 10 years ago there were no gastroenterologists and that once they finish their program they'll be among the first dozen uh, in the country. And this really struck me because this their presence at CMC really demonstrated to me that um, dedication that the institution has to, to access to care on a global scale. Um, the fact that they train people from different countries to send them back home um, to, to improve their ability to provide health services to their communities is really incredible. But they taught me a lot of things too. Um, they, I really enjoyed learning about coffee culture in Ethiopia, which is um, uh, an ancient um, aspect of their culture where people gather on a daily basis and they uh, boil the water together and grind the beans together and um, steep the coffee all the while sharing their updates and chatting and catching up and of course they drink the coffee together and that this is part of the um, their social fabric really is this coffee culture and that it's sort of changing drastically with the 
increased number of Starbucks and venti lattes and um, the quicker pace of life um, where people are no longer sharing their coffee together but rather drinking it alone, which I found um, very interesting to hear about. On the second day uh, of my trip, it was a Sunday and there was a church service and some Malaysian students invited me to go with them and so I did. And it turned out to be a, basically a kickoff for the 100th year of medical education at CMC, which is a big deal. It turned out that the service really was a dedication to Ida Scudder, who started the education system at CMC. And I became more and more aware, really, for the first time of the impact that this individual has had on hundreds and thousands of people over many, many, many years. And it was during the final hymn we were singing and they projected a black and white photo of this woman onto the screen and who is a stranger to me but is also strangely linked to me. And I don't know if I was jet lagged or what, but I was overcome and I, I have to admit, I cried a little bit and I hope it was discreet. Um, but it was the next day I went to the hospital for the first time and I continued to take in the presence of this person, Ida Scudder, whose um, photo was seemed to be on every wall around every corner. And I was uh, spent the first two weeks with the infectious disease service and the attending physician um, asked me during a, a coffee break uh, what an American medical student was doing, you know, here of all places in Valur, India. And based on my experience the day before, you know, I, I was, I sort of hesitated, um, sort of unsure how to navigate these waters. Uh, but I finally squeaked out that I was a relative of Ida Scudder and that you know, as a medical student, I was very interested in getting to know more about CMC and the institution and and how it functioned and to continue learning some medicine while I was there. And needless to say, they were shocked and I was mostly grateful that I didn't cry. Um, on one afternoon was very hot and I didn't want to wait for uh, the bus that normally took me back to the Bagayim campus from CMC, the hospital. Um, and I got into an auto taxi, which is a really fun way to get around. It's sort of like a tricycle motorcycle with a canopy on the top that's open air, but there's a windshield. Um, but it is makes you feel like you're part of the street life um, you hear all the, the sounds and the sights and the smells and the colors and the kinetic energy. And it's a lot of fun. Um, and this particular auto taxi had three decals on the windshield. The first was Ganesha, the Hindu god who's depicted with an elephant head. The second decal was Jesus. And I could not believe it. But the third decal was a smiling Ida Scudder, and it was as if finally the Holy Trinity of Valour was revealed to me. Um, and I was too shocked and I think too shy to take a picture, and I could never find um, one of these decals for sale to buy uh, as a souvenir, because I, I surely would have. But I'm really glad that I finally became more comfortable talking about my connection to the institution because it turns out that people really delight in sharing their stories of, of Ida Scudder. Um, for example, the head of the um, low cost effective care unit called me into his office um, to share with me that Ida B had held him as a baby which is very sweet and actually the social worker, one of the social workers who works at the low cost effective care unit 
um, wax nostalgic showing me photos of the Bullock cart and of the clunky Peugeot and he in fact works with the mobile clinic and so it's clear that he takes great pride in participating in this legacy um, started by by Ida. And I, I got to ride along with the mobile clinic going to the rural communities for a couple of days. This is a really incredible experience. Um, they drive a converted school bus and the back half is a pharmacy where they dispense medicines to people and the front I'd say two-thirds is really is an exam room. There's a table uh, for examining patients, there's a desk for the physician and some chairs. And the the pretty much the sole utility of this vehicle is for conducting prenatal visits for pregnant um, women. Um, and over the course of the day the bus gets very hot but um, one thing I remember vividly about being in the bus is that the girls and women often weave flowers into their hair and so the inside of the bus started to smell like jasmine flowers. Um, and outside the bus, the resident sets up a table and chairs and um, conducts short visits with um, people from the village who come and gather and they get their blood pressure checked and they get medication refills. Um, but the sight of the doctor um, under a shady tree with a group of people lined up um, was really striking and really, I think, is a present day version of the roadside clinic and really is a living version of that legacy as well. <clears throat> Um, I just want to say that my path to medicine has been, um, has not been very linear. I majored in geography and I taught English abroad for two years after college. And it was as I was applying to teach for a third year that I kind of remembered my desire to go into medicine. That I envisioned myself in a profession where I um, developed trusting relationships with people from all sorts of backgrounds and that I would be able to affect positive change in a system that didn't seem to support the most vulnerable people in our society who really needed its services the most. Um, and so as a medical student, I was a little bit older than my classmates, having done these other things um, before going to medical school and because I had to take some additional classes. Um, so it was throughout medical school, I really found myself um, searching for a role model, somebody who shared my goals and who sort of had a similar approach to the profession as me. And I kind of struggled to find that person. And it was while reading Dr. Ida, the biography, that I was really struck by her role as a role model and mentor for women specifically um, for women in the United States. There's a number of references to her really, really encouraging women to go to medical school or to pursue another career or to take a risk and come work with her in Valour. Um, and also it goes without saying the women uh, in Valour who she, you know, she was, um, you know, as she started the nursing school and recruited girls to pursue a career in nursing. And she also trained a number of women to help her as she grew her medical practice to be able to care for patients. Um, and I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, we often think of her as a successful leader and a successful educator. And I think a lot of CMC's success is attributed to her as uh, um, an incredible role model who is invested in the successes of other people. And I think that has contributed to the, the lasting um, success of the institution itself. <clears throat> so um, I'm deeply grateful for my experience um, at CMC. Um, 
I met incredible people. I, it generated so many ideas, you know, as it does when you go someplace new and see things you thought you knew in a different way. Um, I just entered into a vortex of, of new and innovative and exciting ideas as I met people and, and shared stories with them. So nevertheless, I'm excited to go back um, and to continue participating in um, the healthcare that's provided at CMC and to continue learning from it because it has so much to offer uh, so many people. Um, I'm grateful that you all continue to support uh, CMC and to continue to serve its mission and I'm really grateful um, that you invited me to share some of my experiences with you tonight. <laughs>